back, Tierra here with Gypsy Fae Creations, and I'm trying to tie up all of my summer scents before summer ends, and believe it or not, I need to start on my fall scents. Um, if you don't know much about soap, you do have to let things cure after you make it for about four weeks, so you're kind of losing a whole month there, so if you make a I don't know, a summer scent in August, by the time you get it out, it's going to be fall. So I have a few more summer soaps to work on here. And this one's, like, it, it embodies all things summer for me. I was in Michael's and I found this cute little chocolate mold and it's got flamingos and hibiscus flowers on it and some, like, palm leaves. And it was in inspiring me. It was like, hey, Tierra, make soap with this. So I've got my in-beds over here. I'm just using the hibiscus and the little flamingos for this soap. And it's going to be so bright and colorful and cheery and summery. At least that's the goal. So making two loaves of it. And I'm going to start by mixing my lye water and sodium lactate solution into my oils. Let's give them a whirl. And then I'm going to mix in some buttermilk powder. It's my new thing. I'm trying some different additives in soaps. Um, I thought maybe trying some um, clays next time, some kaolin clay. I don't know why I have trouble saying that. Um, or some aloe vera, or I don't know, different things. But I'm just adding a little bit of buttermilk powder to this, which makes for a very creamy bar of soap. So let's mix that in. And we're going to make so much mess today. And by that, I mean I'm turning a lot of bowls. I've been seeing a lot of soap makers do a Clyde slide. And it, I believe it's named after Clyde over at Vibrant Soaps. And it's been, it's been around for a while. It seems like it's coming back, or at least I've been seeing it a lot. And I thought I'd give it a try. Like most soap makers, the key word here is try. And there's still a little bit of buttermilk clumps hanging out in there, which is fine, because I'm going to stick blend these colors into the batter anyway. I'm trying to fit everything in here. Um, so the colors I chose for this, like I said, are going to be very bright, very vibrant. I've got some mango tango in this guy. I've got some Hollywood pink in this guy, and then I have some sunshine yellow in that guy. And I'm going to split this batter into these three bowls as even as I can, anyway. Perfect, but I want equal amounts of each color, I think. Okay. I'm just gonna scrape this guy up because I don't want to use him in this technique. I feel like it's going to be very awkward if I use this very large, tall bowl for this design. So I'm going to take my kitchen vibrator and mix each one of these up. And hopefully they're all in that camera shot right there. Starting with the lightest, the yellow here. I like these colors a lot. These are exactly what I was going for. Not saying that they won't morph a little when, you know, they're so fun. So Saponifying. But I like them at the moment. Alright, so all the stuff to the side and out of my way. And the scent I am using is a sugared papaya and hibiscus fragrance. And it's from Wholesale Supplies Plus. And I want to read to you the description of what is in this scent. Because 
even though it has like two notes is all that they they put in their description on the bottle there's so much more in the soap scent sorry it is a tropical blend of cassava melon lychee juice sugared pineapple and is layered with plumeria blossom and wild hibiscus although it says nothing in there about papaya I, I don't even know if you know if there's actually a papaya scent in there because it's not in the scent description <laughs> I don't know, but it smells really good. It's a very sweet yet tropical scent. It's not like a pineapple or coconut tropical. It's a very, it's very delicate still. And I'm, I'm digging the color vibe that I get from thinking about papaya and hibiscus and tropical. So I think I picked out a good scent for this soap. All right, so I'm going to mix that fragrance into each one of these. And I want to keep this batter at a light trace. So I'm really hoping that this fragrance doesn't accelerate anything and that it plays nicely. Because the technique involves a lot of patience, a lot of mess, <laughs> and very agreeable soap <laughs> batter. So I have some really exciting news, at least I think it's really exciting, and I'm not going to share it with you in this video, but I thought I'd just throw it out there. There's something coming in the mail that I ordered, and I'm really, really excited about it. And honestly, I don't even know when I'm going to be able to show you guys, just because I'm not really ready for it. I still have a few things, a few soaps to get out of the way before I use it. I don't know, am I giving you some hints here? Not sure. <laughs> so it might be another month before I actually get around to showing you guys. I think it's cool and exciting. You're probably like, well, Tierra, long time coming welcome to the real soaping world all right so i'm going to take another bowl dirty another bowl and the the, the rules of this game is to kind of do it in the pops world i guess that's how i think about it and i'm going to alternate these colors for a very long time like this and then pour it into my mold so this part will probably be you know sped up because this is going to take forever and I have to pay attention to my order here Watch all the pretty rainbow colors go really, really fast. All right, and then I'm gonna do the same thing for the other mold, but I'm going to bring it in for a closer look as I pour it. Isn't it so pretty? All right, and I think you're just supposed to start from like one end and just kind of let it go. Of course I didn't I didn't pour enough soap into this bowl to really 100% make it work. But that's all right. I'm going to keep going here. For the other one. Okay, I think I'm done making that mess. So again, just pouring to the one side here. Really starting to thicken up on me. So pretty! Oh, 
tripping everywhere. Okay. I have a feeling one loaf is going to be prettier than the other. That is, that is my prediction. For all the banging. All right, so I'll just scrape out all of my bowls here, and then I'm going to get the topping together, which I have got this matte woodland green pigment to go on top. So I'm going for that the palm leaf look without the palm leaves. Okay, so I got my icing together, and a Wilton, I believe eight, yeah, eight B. I always think that this one is just so much fun for things that aren't very food related. All right. And I even mixed in a little bit of alfalfa powder into this topping as well to give it that green leaf feel. And I, I think I'm, I'm happy with this green. It'll do. All right, so funny stories. I made breakfast this morning and I thought I'd be fancy and make some scrambled eggs with some spinach and some feta cheese. And I wasn't paying attention when I put the salt in <laughs> and didn't realize how much salt that I had put in till we sat down to eat it. And Brad, <laughs> it was inedible. Like I made five scrambled eggs and the whole entire thing was inedible, so bad. On top of the salty bacon we were eating, but Bradley ate it. <laughs> Either he was really hungry or he just really loves me that much that he wanted to eat these salty eggs. <laughs> oh boy. And then last video I made, I talked about going to Deep Creek. And that was an experience. Um, it, was, it was an okay time, I guess. When we got there, everything seemed to be going swell. We played um, the Jackbox games. All nine of us played them, and you know they they had never played those games, so they just thought it was like the best thing since sliced bread. And I can agree to that. If you've not played these games, they are the coolest games in the whole world, my opinion. But once you play this game, you're never going to be the same. That's all you're going to want to do. Guarantee it. And we went to bed at like 2 o'clock in the morning and we all woke up the next day. We had beautiful weather. Brad and one of his brothers went out to Duck Donuts, which is similar to, I guess, a Fractured Prune. Or sorry, Deep Creek Donuts, which is also like a, a Duck Donuts. They make fresh cake donuts and they have all kinds of different toppings you can put on from like glazes, the sugars, to cereals, and chocolate chips, which I can only eat about one of those without wanting to throw up because they're so sweet. And we all got on the boat, and that was nice. Beautiful weather. Bradley got a little suntan, I got a little color, and his family likes to rent out the tube that they tie onto the back of the boat and they drag everyone around. So we got one of those, we went out to the pier, we found a family of ducks. It was a mama duck and her eight babies and we got to feed them some quackers just because that's what we had. Probably shouldn't feed ducks quackers, but she had eight babies and we wanted to feed them. And then we got on the boat and everyone took turns on the raft being pulled around. The object is to knock the people on the raft off. They just go flying in the air and land into the middle of Deep Creek Lake. And that is not something I like to do. Not a fan of it, no interest in it, but the boys love it. Brad has um, two brothers and they're just like little kids. They just go for 
round after round on this and sitting up, laying down, you know, just trying to do it with no hands. Bradley got hurt. I guess in one of the fly-offs, he must have kneed his brother in the hip. And he seemed all right for most of the day. He was walking around on it. I even got on the raft. I have never been on that raft. I pretty much told Bradley, if I fall, you fall. Um, if I jump, you jump. Don't let me, don't let me land in this thing by myself, basically. And I think I'm a little uneven on the icing here. So I'm just going to put some dollops on some of the tops of these. And he did. And I got on, I didn't even have my bathing suit because again, I don't do these things. But when I fell off, he fell off. And then we got back to the house later that night and he was like, my knee hurts. And I'm like, really Bradley? What do you want me to do for you? You're ruining my, these are slippery. You're ruining my, um, what is the show that I like? Big Bang Theory. There is a marathon of that on. And that's all I wanted to do was watch it. But he was serious. His knee really hurts. We think he probably tore something. He had a very swollen, red, bruised knee. His face was like pale white. He was in so much pain. And Deep Creek, there's nothing around Deep Creek. There are no patient firsts or Kaiser permanent days or there's nothing for miles. It's kind of in the middle of nowhere. So he was in lots of pain and there was really nothing we could have done about it. So that was fun. And then we got up the next day, packed up our stuff. He felt a little better. He even drove home. He still couldn't bend his knee, but he drove home and it's three and a half hour drive home. And we had Luke, we took Luke with us. And hello, you don't go there. Uh, these things are really, really slippery and they're really hard to grip. So I'll just stick you there. Um, he gets really, really stressed out in the car. And he used to be really good in the car. I don't know what happened. He changed, he doesn't like going in the car anymore. You know, he's blind, he's old. And he gets stressed out. He does a lot of panning and a lot of shaking. And he does not sit down. The whole ride, he will stand there breathing his sewer breath into your face. I'm sure he can't help it, I know, but it's not a very <laughs> enjoyable ride when you have to smell dog breath that smells like roadkill the whole time. So the windows are down and I've got a bottle of perfume <laughs> I'm spraying in the back seat. That's all well and good. I thought like that's the worst it could get. But he must have eaten one of the other dog's food before we left. And he has a very sensitive stomach. You just can't change up his food like that. And since his teeth are really bad, he must have inhaled it on top of it. So he got sick in the car. I turn around and I'm sorry, this is probably really gross and you really don't care. But it's funny if you think about it because I had the ride from hell. <laughs> we both did. So he's throwing up. And not only is he throwing up, and there are no exits for miles coming down from Deep Creek. From Northern Maryland, you drive forever. So he's throwing up, he starts rolling around in it, he's smearing it all over my back seat, and then he starts to eat it. Thank you, Luke. So we stop at a Exxon and we throw away his bed. And I've got some glitter here. And we get back in the car and he starts doing circles. So he starts pooping in the car, and it's not just poop, it's diarrhea. The poor boy has diarrhea, and I have throw up that he's done rolled in and ate and smeared all over the car, and now diarrhea. We still have two hours left to go. So let's say Luke will not be going on those car rides ever, ever, ever again. True story. All right, so I'm going to let these pretty loads of soap sit for about 24 or 48 hours and then I'll unmold them and bring you guys back for the cut. Okay, so I'm back to cut this and I've already cut one loaf of it up. Um, I feel like this is going to be the cooler bar. You can probably see the other loaf in the background that I cut. So let's see. Again, I need to work on lining up my embeds a little better. Hmm. All right. Let's 
see what this one looks like. It reminds me of a tiki party. Is that the right? It's tiki uh, Hawaiian luau, maybe. I think I might name it something like that. The colors and the hibiscus flowers, the, I just see tiki. Very nice. I've actually been to a luau. We went to Hawaii and did the whole roasted pig in the ground and the, the what is it, hula dancing? <laughs> it was a really nice experience. It really was. The food was good, the scenery was great, the people were nice. I would totally do that again. Can't go to Hawaii and not have a luau. I'm loving this design. I can't wait to try it again. And I don't remember which one of the soaps I poured first, because I don't know, even if I did this right, <laughs> which design is correct. Because <laughs> I'll show you, like, this one. That doesn't look anything like the ones I'm cutting now, you know? But it makes a cool little design. I like one bar better than the other, I gotta say. And I think these colors are really good as well for this technique. Pick the right colors. I'm running out of room on my counter here. I have about four loaves of soap up here. Oh, that's so cool. Good. The other loaf of soap I have up here is a cookies and cream soap. I'll share that with you guys. And I didn't video this one. I've had this scent and the mold that I got off Amazon and these little beads that I put in there. I've had them since like April and I never got around to the video. And I know Katie Carson over at Royalty Soaps did a video and I didn't want to do one just like that. I like you guys have seen it. I know mine's different than hers but she just came out with it and I didn't want to go right on top of her. So, but if you're interested, I, I want to make this soap again. I want to make the cookies and cream soap again because it was so much fun and I want to have it in stock as a regular item. So if you are interested in one day seeing me make a cookies and cream soap, if you want to see my version of it, let me know. And leave a comment in the sections down below. Yay, I'm a very good rhymer. All right, so let's cut this last one. And I wanna thank you all for watching. If you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up. If you're new, don't forget to subscribe. There's even that little notification bell. If you wanna hit that, it'll let you know um, when I release new videos. Any questions or comments, you can leave them in the section below and until next time smell you later guys